Today we'll be talking about budgeting and forecasting using Oracle's Planning and Budgeting Cloud Service, PBCS, versus Microsoft Excel. First, a bit about Saturn, where BI and EPM cloud specialized Oracle Platinum partners. We've received recognition for fast growth and outstanding management by award programs like Smart CEO and Inc. Magazine. Here are some of Saturn's offerings. Not only do we provide BI and EPM implementation, but a full range of professional and support services, including managed services, upgrades, and performance optimizations. This is a list of some of the clients that Saturn has worked with. And now I'll hand it off to Matt Gualtieri, our BI and EPM practice director. You know, just to kick it off, um, key conversations that I've, I've had, uh, not only from a functional role, but also um, talking to people outside of, of my particular positions, is that 40% of the organizations can only forecast three and 75% of the finance managers still use spreadsheets for financial planning and budget control. Now, generally speaking, that's not, you know, a, a horrible thing if your company is you know, smaller and, and you're in control of a lot of the moving parts. But as companies grow, um, this process becomes unsustainable and those spreadsheets start to take on a life of their own. So, you know, uh, the telling fact, 3% of finance managers globally describe themselves as drowning in spreadsheet. And I was no different um, when I had my functional role. So here's a typical scenario. Um, the CFO wants to always improve the efficiency and effectiveness of their annual budgeting process. But I think more important than that, it's, it's about operational efficiency. It's about managing your, your calendar, managing and understanding the information, creating relevant, accurate, and timely information. So uh, at this point, it's about getting the information quicker and um, also more accurate and also more relevant to the business. Um, so while a lot of people still, you know, are in the spreadsheet world because of its simplicity to use, you know, little to no learning curve, just about everybody you know in the finance arena um, and outside of it knows how to use Excel. And it's also low cost, but um, as you can see, there's a zero return as the, as the company starts to grow. So why don't you Excel holding people back? Because Again, I think that you know when you start off in your organization, it, it really starts off as a conversation of, you know, let's just build this template, and then the pe template says, as your business changes, we're going to need this, we're going to need that, we're going to have to, you know, add criteria for you know financial reporting, um, planning, um, other types of things, and each and every time, this um, the depth and the breadth of what you need to report on increases. So why isn't it good? It's not an enterprise solution. Basically what that means is that it's not a database tool. It stands on, it sits on somebody's um, uh, de desktop. Only one person is in control of that information and typically they have to email it or put it out on a shared file location. Uh, sometimes there can be miscues in terms of what versions you're working on, those type of things. It's not scalable or sustainable, meaning that uh, not only from an organizational perspective, you can't have you know, 300 employees accessing one spreadsheet, but also you, you know, when you're trying to communicate and collaborate this information, it makes it very difficult to um, lock things down and understand who has access to what and what's been changing that would uh, potentially um, misinterpret or misstate some financial drivers. Um, also, when you're using Excel, you know, the drivers aren't enforced. Everybody has kind of their own variation of of what they think um, their drivers are, and drivers meaning like what drives my cost, um, what uh, you know drives my uh, revenue, um, what drives other areas of the business. Um, so Excel is designed for ad hoc analysis, and while it's very good, it, it's limited in terms of its dimensionality and, and how you can you know share that and communicate that information across the organization. So when we talk about high level planning considerations. Every time I start this discussion, it's, it, it really is um, not what you're doing in Excel now, because what you're doing in Excel is really a stopgap measure. You know, it's like, well, we're doing this, and, you know, we do a pretty good job at it. Um, so the questions kind of turn and, and twist into, well, are you getting what you want out of that? Are you getting the dimension?
missions that you're planning off of? Is it linked to your strategy of your organization? How, do, how tactically, how is that working within your organization? Do you know what the accuracy is? Can you respond to changes? How quickly can you pull that information together? So whenever we look at it, I always start with the actual environment first, where you want to be in the future. Let's take a look at some planning drivers. What are going to be centralized? Like, for example, we have a merit increase, a very simple example for salaries, 3% for the year. It's going to be globally implemented. It's across the enterprise. That's what we're going to start with. Planning dimensions. For example, do we want to plan at the legal entity level? Do we want to go to the segment level? Do we want to actually um, plan at the product level? Can we plan at the product level? And that gives you some insight into your foundational information. You know, do we have our source systems aligned with how we want to do things? And then finally, the integration feature, which is uh, the user interface and input. We can, you know, do we want to use an Excel file? Do we want to use a flat file? Do we want to use a system feed? Do we want to do manual input from the system? Um, and more importantly, and I think probably one of the most important pieces of that, once you get all the planning dimensions laid out, is how does this work in theory? Like the theory is always great, but how do I actually, you know, employ tactics to make this work to my advantage? so that I'm not, you know, making this um, more burdensome um, rather than, you know, smooth and streamless, uh, streamlined process. And then finally, your reporting will be driven by your actuals, your planning, and you can support actual variance analysis provides decision support. And the key is to that decision support, you're getting information quicker, which means that you can respond to variances in areas um, much faster than waiting for a spreadsheet analysis to be performed sitting on some guy's laptop in Malaysia. So what is the solution that we're talking about? And uh, again, we're going to focus mostly on PBCS, um, planning, uh, budgeting, cloud services. And this um, also can be used as an integration tool. So not only can you you know, leverage what you're doing in planning, but you also can use actuals and forecasts to kind of generate um, an integrated financial view. So I'll hand it off to Shree. Hi, thanks, Matt. Uh, actually, before Shree starts, there's a brief poll question we'd like to ask. So you'll see on your screen a question. I'll give you a couple seconds to respond. All right, we'll close this poll question. And also, I'd like you to take note at the bottom corner, right-hand corner of your screen, we do have a handout, which you can download at the end of the webinar. And now, Sri Ram. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Nina. So first of all, um, let's uh, take a deep dive into PBCS. So what, what is PBCS? You, you all know that um, Oracle's on-premise uh, product, Hyperion Planning, that has been in the market for almost now 15 plus years. It's a proven technology. Oracle took that technology on cloud and that, that is what you are getting on uh, PBCS environment. So that environment is totally a flexible uh, planning and budgeting uh, reporting uh, on cloud um, which, is, which has direct or uh, you can say rich integration, integration with all your Microsoft Office products as well your uh, uh, PDF uh, and other uh, reporting areas. Now, wh what are the things that you get uh, when you sign up for a PBCS um, environment? Uh, with with this, you get two environments that uh, that are your development and production, uh, which can host one planning application uh, ranging up to three BSO plan types and four ASO plan type in total. Um, the space that will be available on the cloud will be 150 gigs. And this PBCS doesn't include your pre-built Oracle models such as your CapEx, Workforce, Project Planning that will be available on your uh, Enterprise Planning and Budgeting Cloud Services. Some of the benefits that you get um, uh, uh, with PBCS is first of all your lower cost of ownership. That means there is no infrastructure cost involved at all. This is totally uh, subscription based. So 
easily company can uh, uh, go with this implementation and they can, they can cap uh, instead of uh, spending much on your capex they can just opex it out uh, they can show this as an operational expense so yeah so to Shri's point subscription based no capex infrastructure and for a lot of companies you know hiring an IT team and an infrastructure support team having the area uh, installation areas the appropriate um, rooms for all this information is it can be quite uh, costly um, also when you when you look at something you want to you want to look at it from a term of time to value and basically what this means is you know you don't really you're not really loading software at a centralized location you're not responsible for you know um, pushing out um, patch changes and, and figuring out when this can be um, handled and the quick implementation time. You can be up and running uh, fairly quickly um, after the information gathering air, um, sessions occur. Infrastructure maintenance, installation, upgrades, patching, it's all managed by Oracle. So they manage the patches, they push them out. You have an option of, of when you're going to push them out. You can use a partner um, for managed services to, to help you you know, um, go through and vet those changes and see if they have any significant impact, even if you don't have the support in the um, infrastructure side. And, um, you know, you're still at a lower cost of ownership, even if even with a managed service agreement on top of that. So reporting capabilities, um, again, they have dynamic web forms that are interactive with the information that you're reporting off of. Uh, financial reporting studio integration, which means that, you know, it's uh, it takes you to the path where, you know, logical path, you know, uh, financial, um, actually report wizards allow you to, you know, easily create reports, any type of reports that you need, depending on your functional area or needs. Data integration. You have inbuilt data and uh, metadata import, export utilities, inbuilt um, in FDME ETL tool. And basically what this means is that all the information that you're using, you're using integrated tools so they recognize all of the dimensions you're using, account structures, it's integrated so you can easily move information between, you know, actuals, plan, forecast, and, and vice versa. So it, it, it makes things much easier because you know that all of those platforms are talking on the same level and with the same information. Uh, simplicity. Virtually no learning curve. It has a very good, easy Excel feel to it. Driver planning beyond finance and across the enterprise. Simplified technology choices. You can have um, financial transparency, process transparency, all of those things that, that you know, make uh, communication and collaboration from an Excel uh, universe very difficult to do. So the benefit areas are planning, budgeting, and forecasts. As I touched on it earlier, you have a centralized location for budget. That means that you can control, you know, um, the items that are um, understood by the entire um, organization. These are what the increases are going to be. This is what my fringe rate is going to be. And these, these reside centrally. Um, they improve the transparency so that everybody that's involved in this process understands what type of drivers you're using and um, how to get through these cycle times and reduce them. Profitability and cost analytics, you can get down to a more granular level and understand what your buildup of materials are. If you're in a manufacturing environment, you have a centralized location to provide some of the um, overhead variance rates, understanding what those overhead variance rates in the, uh, are and how they impact you know, the overall profitability of your organization. You have management reporting and analytics where you can bring other information in from other sources and you know, um, link them operationally to underlying financial data to, to identify trends. Um, finally, you can, you know, more importantly, you can decrease your controllable costs through a variance analysis. You get information at a granular enough level where you understand if there's an issue there, there's a problem there, and you can go through and dig into that relatively quick. Whereas if you're in a spreadsheet environment, you kind of have to, there's a variance here. Well, maybe it's an error in the way I posted it. Um, uh, I got to go back and send a question out and email the person. I lose a day because they're, you know, in a different time zone. Um, and you know the drill. So um, before I uh, close, I'll just tell you that it, it makes the process much more um, efficient. Um, and Sri will kind of go over the PBS architecture, how it kind of fits into your overall ecosystem. Thanks, Mark. So if you look at this diagram, uh, 
your Oracle PVCS, as Matt mentioned earlier, that it comes with a predefined or pre-built ETL tool, your FDME. So this FDME tool has a capability to connect to any kind of your data sources, might be a flat file, might be your uh, Oracle database, non-Oracle database, for example, SAP, PeopleSoft, uh, uh, FlexLine, FlexWin, um, any kind of data source. You can basically connect up to that source, pull up the information, map it out information according to your planning dimensions, and then uh, planners can plan it out and then finally have different reports not only on web based but also in your Microsoft Office products you can uh, run, run them through. So with this let me walk you through some of the demonstration of this product, what this product is capable and how it uh, looks and feels like. So this is your main cloud environment uh, that is available from Oracle. Let me quickly log in into the system. As you see, as, as soon as I log in into the system, it, it welcomes me uh, on the front screen showing me my launch application, some watch demos that if I want to learn more about this tool, I can watch some of the demos, I can go to a simplified interface or perform some of the admin activity, uh, activities depending on the task that I need to perform. Now let's say as soon as I go to my application, it will bring me to the area where it will define all the tasks that has been assigned to me, what are the tasks that I have completed and what are the tasks and what are their due dates accordingly. Let's just say um, we are taking a path of going through operating forecast that these are some of the tasks that has been uh, assigned to me as a, on op, how to do my operating forecast. So I'm going to start with that. So first forecast portion is my revenue forecast where based on the number of products that I'm selling, my units, ESP and gross margin percentage will be calculated accordingly. So I can go into the system and I'm saying that in August, let's say the product sale is going to increase to 500. As soon as I define 500 in this, all my uh, business calculations that has been defined behind the scene uh, will be calculated out and accordingly my values will be updated out. So th this is more on kind of a direct feed uh, to the system that I'm uh, making. Similarly, as Matt mentioned earlier regarding my global and uh, local drivers, I can go ahead depending on my security access, I can update global or local drivers accordingly. So these are some of the uh, uh, global drivers that I'm looking around. For example, trips, square feet, headcount, average and all this. I can go ahead, look by different entities, update uh, my drivers accordingly. I can go to my sales driver assumptions. I can over here define local drivers. For example, my international sales, sales is, uh, this I can define over here. I think Matt want to add some point to this. Yeah, and I think, I think it's important to note too, like the, the sheets that he was showing you, the one previous, you can have those preloaded. So let's say that you don't want to start from scratch. You can actually load these from, you know, prior year, current quarter, and adjust it based on seasonality. Um, you can look at this information or use a, an increment, you know, like our overall growth tar target is 5% um, uh, organically. And you can use that as a global driver that will, will drive those uh, unit values upwards. Thanks, Mark. So now with this driver, I can actually calculate out my cost percentages as well as cost to the company. Similarly, if I want to uh, give a demonstration about my headcount and salary forecast, I can show over here that for a typical uh, year based on my quarters, I can define the number of heads that I need. With this number of heads, uh, as well as I can define the average salary for that particular head, their employee benefit percentage, and that will calculate out my salaries as well as um, other details about it. Similarly, we can have forms Similarly, we, we can have form structures where you can have everything to be inputted by user. So you can start from a uh, low level where everything feed comes from the users or you can start uh, from a, a place where things are calculated based on your driver values. The system can be defined uh, any way as you need. Um, 
let me show some of the reporting capabilities of this product, how uh, this report can be generated and what different kinds of report can be played with this. So this, as, as this tool has a capability of running the reports on your web as well as on your PDF uh, basis, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a income statement quarterly on a web, then I'm going to export that into a PDF uh, format. So right now just I executed a quarterly income statement for this uh, company. You can see this is a web base where I have reliable options available for different departments. I can go into that. I can actually expand my uh, accounts. I can drill uh, into detail level accounts. I can export this file directly into a PDF format and then this PDF format I can just uh, email to my board as well as uh, to other planners. Also with this tool you get a capability of performing free form reporting or I would say ad hoc capability that uh, in Excel you can actually directly connect to this tool and perform your ad hoc analysis or whatever functionality that we showed on uh, web the similar functionality can be performed uh, over here in Excel. As well as you can create your own uh, on-fly form uh, with Excel formulas and you can save that uh, back to the web and uh, provide access to the users accordingly. With this, I will uh, hand it over back to Matt to go over some of the case studies that we have. Yeah, before, before I start on that, that's a, the new function with uh, uh, eBPCS is um, really that you can actually define formulas within an, um, um, an Excel template that you have. And based on those formulas, you hold those formulas each time you pull it up. In the older versions, you know, you kind of put those formulas in and then they would disappear. You couldn't really distribute them to anybody unless you took it offline. And now they hold the values and they interact with the um, dimensions that you're selecting. So that's a good. Yep, that, that, that's a pretty good uh, point which Matt brought up. This this new functionality is called Smart Form, where you can create formulas on fly as well as you can create members in the application on fly. This member doesn't show up in your database, but they will be kind of a pointers which will hold the entire formula information. And every time when you refresh your forms your Excel formulas that you have put in your conditional, arithmetic, logical expression, whatever formula you are using, they will pull up uh, in that form accordingly. So when we talk about a, a win story for us, um, we were involved with a, um, a biometric technology provider and, and um, you know, the, the scenario that we they were under is they had many disparate data sources um, and then they were required from these data sources to kind of merge them together and create operational statutory management reporting. Uh, the challenge uh, was, of course, is that they were trying to manage this through Excel. So they were trying to hit moving targets, which is, uh, you know, as all of you may know that have been involved in this process before, it's very difficult um, understanding, you know, who's, it, who's adhering to the cutoff. Um, the, the numbers that you have or that you're speaking to internally or externally, are they the same? And a lot of these disconnects are caused by Excel and they were, had a very manually intensive uh, process in place. So our challenge was to develop a contribution margin reporting at the product SKU level, um, developing a sustainable change management process. So. You know, when we talk about sustainable change management, we're talking about transparency in process and transparency in the drivers and the financial, uh, the underlying financial information. Uh, they also have additional complexity in handling multi-currency transactions and translations because they needed to look at their financial statements on a constant dollar level, which all, you know, most international companies um, operating overseas will need to see that. Um, so the solution that we did is we implemented an ETL tool managing the flow of information, uh, actual plan and forecast data using the FDME. So we completely revamped their integration process and before they were taking manual extracts from the system trying to develop these reports which had to be, you know, requested by IT and they had to create a separate table. Um, we were able to do that seamlessly using um, the inbuilt tool, the ETL tool that we talked about, FDME-E. 
we implemented a unified strategy linking operational, financial, statutory reporting within the organization. What that meant is that we had one set of books. They weren't disconnected. A lot of times with the planning is that when you do the planning, operational planning or management planning, uh, they're disconnected from the statutory book. So uh, a lot of the information doesn't link up cleanly. So, you know, um, for example, uh, you have a legal entity in Texas that, you know, they have $100 million in revenue, but there are several management entities that make up that. And they only, you know, um, recognized uh, 85 million. So where's the disconnect? Uh, so those are the types of things that that helps alleviate, um, creating, you know, um, relevancy, accuracy, and timeliness as well. So we developed a sustainable change management process and accommodated those changes in metadata. So what that did was it allowed us to say, well, you know, this is what we are now. This is where we'd like to be. And how do we do this and communicate this across? Uh, a broad range of, uh, of users, and, and that's how we were able to do that using PBCS as our integration tool. Um, uh, finally, the benefits and impact. We obviously, we improved our integration process by implementing an ETL solution. Uh, obvious benefits of that is a quicker timeline, uh, less reconciliation and review time, uh, also, um, you know, easier way to distri uh, distribute uh, the information generated from that. Uh, we improved the communication and collaboration of financial cycles. Uh, where you saw that is like with Shri, you, um, what he showed you with the task list, you can look at the task list, like what do I need to do to get this complete? You know, it gives you those steps of where I need to go, how I need to get this done. It, also, you can communicate changes in the planning process uh, during any time uh, of the year. So we, uh, you know, approximately a 50% uh, reduction in financial flow cycle times they were using PBCS as an integration, a financial integration tool, where they were linking actuals, plan, and forecast um, to generate these um, plan and, and forecast numbers. Um, they also improved their financial transparency across the organization, along with um, increasing the depth and breadth and value of the reporting that they had. So, after the uh, PDCS implementation, before four to six months, after one to two months, validation seven to 14 days, after two to five days, reporting distribution took hours. After, it was real time. As soon as you're finished, you send it out. I think you saw a demonstration with that when uh, Shri pushed things out to PDF format or Excel, however you want to distribute that. Um, budget calculations, hours, real time. Um, versioning, multiple spreadsheets. Here we were able to incorporate those versions within the planning cycle, forecasting cycle, and even actuals for that matter. Change control, eight to ten hours. You know, there was a ripple down effect. You know, first the time determining there needs to be a change, communicating the change, making sure the change is done right. Now it's centrally managed, one to two hours versus eight to ten hours. So features as we do a recap, um, I think the, the key uh, items here is, um, you know, from our perspective is we, we kind of tried to rank these a little bit, but integration is probably um, number one on our list because it's tedious and, and manual. Um, PBCS has the built-in ETL to manage multiple sources of data, which makes things a lot easier. Um, more importantly than that, integration also, I would say second on the list would probably be communication and collaboration, manual version, control equal um, error. I mean, that's, that's the long and short of it. The, the more human hands touching and changing something, the greater um, probability there is for error. Uh, system generated version controls within PBCS kind of eliminate those areas. And then finally, the, the derived benefits from that are financial control. You have accuracy of control somewhat lacking. Uh, from an Excel standpoint, you have to build them, lock down, you know, uh, input uh, cells. And you, anybody that's been familiar with that, you know that if you don't get it the first time, second time, you have to go back and you have to redistribute the spreadsheet to everybody. So this facilitates the production of relevant, accurate, and timely information. And it also allows you to set up controls, you know, within the sp uh, sheet itself. So you're not overwriting formulas, you're not allowed to add rows, all the information um, links to the relevant information that you're planning off of. And finally, 
um, security and workflow, managing you know the approval process, uh, reporting uh, from Excel. Obviously, it's only Excel based. Um, TVCS has the flexibility to go from Excel to PDF, Microsoft PowerPoint, any of the tools that you're using um, to help you um, manage that information and, and gain that visibility. Uh, mobile capability, Excel, you can pull it up on your phone from an email. That's not really mobile access. TVCS has a web-based integration to mobile access, which you know formats the information to the phone, size of your phone uh, or tablet. Android and or um, Apple. Thanks, Matt. So now that you've seen a full presentation and brief demo, we'd like to ask a few more poll questions that will come up on your screen. As you did earlier, you'll get a couple of seconds to answer each question. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. Okay, and then the final question. Okay, now we'll open it up for questions. Uh, feel free to type any question you have in the question section of your sidebar. Uh, we do have one question. Um, if we have BICS, uh, which is the Business Intelligence Cloud Service, can we put data there from PBCS? Um, yeah, let me take over this question. So, Saturn has developed a pre-built uh, pre adapter, I, I would say which can export out your information from PVCS and load that information directly on your BIC. So uh, in general, I would say you can have a real-time system where you can have reporting available in your BIC and uh, all your budget and uh, actual data coming from your PVCS uh, system. 